easily some of the best news coming out of Germany today is the release of more and more Allied prisoners of war. Stalag 11B, which held about 6,500 men, was liberated by the 7th Armoured Division, the Desert Rats, and at least 15 Allied nations were represented in the camp. Men holding up five fingers are indicating that they've been prisoners for five years. Living in tents which formed part of the hospital were men who had been made to march 500 miles from Silesia. Over 4,000 did the march under such terrible conditions that a number died from exhaustion on the way and after arrival. 21 were buried in the first two days after reaching this camp, which was at Fallingspostel. Stalag 357, which was also near Fallingspostel, was another camp freed by the desert rats. The Germans had started to march thousands of these prisoners away as our troops approached, but most, if not all, of the British were brought back when the Hun realized the hopelessness of his position. And now the tables are certainly turned. Prisoners chalk up a very different notice on the board. Over the heads of the former German commandant and his quartermaster are to be seen the Allied flags. And our prisoners have the exquisite pleasure of seeing the jailers jailed. At another place in Germany, Paul Wyand of Movietone got two men to the mic. They were Sergeant Reg Isherwood of Rumford with the cap and Sergeant John Richards from Wales. Captured at Arnhem, they escaped from their camp. Treatment and conditions had been very bad on the way to the camp and in it. Our rations for the journey were, we were given at first a half of loaf and some margarine. Marched in batches of 300 and in all, about 25,000 of us. When Brunswick was captured by the Americans, Oflag 79, one of the biggest officers' camps in Germany, was liberated. There were officers of the RAF, Canadians, Indians and others here, and even before they left their prison, they were naturally thrilled to the core, not only by cigarettes, but by the prospect that now lay ahead. Quite a different prospect faced Major General Karl Feit, the Brunswick commander in the field, he was captured in the night when just about to try and make his own getaway. He seems to have behaved like a Nazi to the end. 